Welcome to this series about how GPT-3 writing tools work and four things to be careful with when using them. My name is Dominic, I'm one of the co-founders at Text Cortex. Let's jump right at it. The emergence of AI copywriting. GPT-3 has motivated a lot of product builders to create a pleasantly looking user interface on top of it. I just mentioned a few of them in an earlier video. However, we observed new launches of the ever so identical product on a weekly basis. After seeing the 40th tool, I stopped collecting information about them in my knowledge base. The funny thing is, I saw some of them claiming they are differentiating themselves by being the better communicator to the API of GPT-3. API is short for an application programming interface. That sounds very complex, but do you remember how the big oracles in the movies always had a gatekeeper talking for them? An API is such a thing for computers. All these AI copywriting companies are making a pilgrimage to the gatekeeper of GPT-3 to send their users desire and receiving an answer which they deliver to you. However, GPT-3 is not the only oracle on the block anymore. With the increased interest, there's a variety of different oracles available and at Text Cortex, it is our daily bread to train our oracles as well. So let's jump into it. Four things to be careful when using GPT-3 writing tools. As I said, we have seen those AI copywriting tools pop up like mushrooms on a rainy forest floor. Most of them with the single motivation of making quick money. And this becomes a problem. In particular, if you look at the stability of the company behind, of the, behind the software. We made some estimations and taking our power users as an example here, their operations based on GPT-3 would solely cost already 100 US dollar per month. My condolences to all the startups who have started lifetime deals for initial funding only to realize that GPT-3 doesn't come for free. And this ultimately sad for the customers who bought into those because most of them are now standing in front of shut doors of the customer support or the software is simply not answering back. Even large AI companion companies like Replica AI with their 7 million users have moved away from GPT-3 because of the limitation of not being able to influence the quality, but simultaneously also the high operational cost for the sake of being locked in into OpenAI's dependencies. To my first advice, don't jump on the cheapest lifetime deal. As with many things in life, buying cheap is expensive. So are lifetime deals. I have seen many users reach out to us because at one point, the software they were used to work with either shut down customer support or itself wasn't working anymore because it had a fundamental operational flaw. Hence, be careful with paying the quick buck to somebody with dollar signs in their eyes. My second advice, don't fall for the number of templates trick. Many advertised templates are mere placeholders in order to get an idea of what you might be interested in. This is a common complaint we observe about instruction to creation relevancy or an ever-repeating creation pattern. We actively ask our users in close conversations within our communities what they want. When we see enough interest in a format, we dig deeper, we gather data, we train our own AI transformer models and offer our community something sustainable. My third advice is be careful because when everybody uses the same, it can hurt your rankings. As we are speaking all those rule-based softwares which claim to be AI but ultimately just push your input through a cookie cutter process are getting hit by Google. Google is actively going after AI generated content. And even though modern technologies like GPT-3 feel incredibly creative and natural, it gives you the sense of security assuming detecting their creations would be a challenge. However, if too many people are using a single pattern to create, it can be reverse engineered. We see service providers based on GPT-3 offering you to write 10,000 blog articles per month. Those bad actors will just spiral out more trays to reverse engineer and get an idea, you know, what, they, what Google needs to hit. And currently we think that a relevancy through content metric might be leveraged to detect the usage of AI generated content. Let me give you a comparable situation in the market for mobile phones and let me tell you why that's important. If you were to offer a service, build an application or attack a system, for which one would you go? Apple's iOS with approximately 27% 
or Android 71% market share. Put yourself into Google's shoes. What would, you, what would be your first target when tackling AI-generated content? The one with the higher market share. In order to not get your organic SEO hit, it will come to your advantage to use smaller, more focused AI models, which are experts in their field. Next to it, you should look for as much customizability as possible. We, for example, offer you to leverage different creativity engines on top of our smaller, more focused AI models. Fourth advice, instability when the infrastructure updates. Those large language models are developing continuously. Any update in training affects the output of the text quality. As most AI copywriting tools are reliant and dependent on the many variations of GPT-3, a change in the infrastructure disrupts the quality. And it takes time until they have found their communication to their oracle again. So this should give you an overview of what happens with all those AI copywriting tools and why you should be on the watch when choosing a tool for your work. In the next video, we are talking more about where the technology is heading and what we can expect next. If you are interested in AI writing, subscribe to our content, check out Text Cortex. We are building our own small AI models around your writing needs and bring them right where you need them in your workflow with our Chrome extension.